You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. I uh, Just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Sons of America's Heroes. An album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson. Just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, buy, buy, buy. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it there to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.
You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jesse. How y'all doing out there today? I've got one thing to say. Well, play right now. Big boom, Moab. Oh my gosh. Knew we had it. Knew a bit about it. Never thought I'd see it used. I mean, it is huge. It is absolutely insanely huge. So, wow. I'm not even quite sure where to start with Moab. Except to say it's huge. Now, before we get into the fact that we dropped one, we need to know what it is so we can talk about it. Don't you agree? Because I do. I think that's where we need to start. What did we drop? Let's start there. All right. The Moab bomb. Also known as a GBU-43B. Oh, yes. Commonly referred to as mother of all bombs. Because it's actual, actually what MOAB stands for is Massive Ordnance Air Blast. So, no, the military didn't name it Mother of All Bombs, but with an acronym like MOAB, I can see where it comes up all the times. The bomb was designed to be delivered by a C. C-130 Hercules, basically a cargo plane. The MC-130 Combat Talon or the MC-130H Combat Talon II. Basically, huge plane to carry, huge bomb. Is it the biggest bomb out there? No. Not according to claims. Not even, and I'm staying away from all nuke stuff, folks. I'm talking conventional. Is it the biggest thing? No. Our dear friends Russia claim to have something called the father of all bombs, which is supposedly four times bigger, and it's a thermobaric device. The father of all bombs has the equivalent of 44 tons of TNT. So, and the bomb's blast and pressure wave have a similar effect to a small tactical nuke, although on a smaller scale. And just like the Moab, it detonates in midair. Most damage is inflicted by a supersonic shock wave and extremely high temperatures. Now, let's talk Moab. All right. The 
The Moab was tested with ex, ex, was t first tested in March 11, 2003, at Eglin Air Force Base, and then again the 21st of November 2003. It's believed only 15 were produced. We're down to 14. Now this was the first live use of this particular weapon. Now it does bear some similarity to the BLU-82, commonly called the Daisy Cutter, which was used to clear heavy wooded areas in Vietnam and Iraq, in Vietnam and in Iraq to clear mines, and later as a psychological weapon against the Iraqi military. However, they don't use the Blue 82 anymore. So, it is definitely, it's not a penetrator weapon. It doesn't burrow in. What it does, it's intended for a soft to medium target covering a large area like uh, canyon, cave, tunnels. So, yeah, we dropped something huge today. And that is no joke. I mean, this is huge. And it does produce a mushroom cloud type thing. It really does. Now, here's the Air Force's official statement. At 7.32 p.m. local time, April 13, 2017, U.S. Forces Afghanistan conducted a strike on Daesh and Syrian Khorasan Tunnel Complex in Achin District, Nangahar Province, Afghanistan, as part of ongoing efforts to defeat Daesh K, in other words, Daesh Khorasan, in Afghanistan. Dash K, also known as the Khorasan Group, is based in the Afghanistan province and is composed of primarily of form, former members of Tariqi Taliban, Pak, Pakistan, and Afghan Taliban. So basically, the Taliban rebranded themselves as Khorasan. The strike used a GBU 43B massive ordnance air bomb dropped from a U.S. aircraft. The strike was designed to minimize the risk to Afghan and U.S. forces conducting clearing operations in the area while maximizing the destruction of ISIS-K fighters and facilities. As quote unquote ISIS, or as, my, as your host prefers to call them, Dash's losses have mounted. They are using IEDs, bunkers, and tunnels to thicken their defenses. This is the right munition to reduce these obstacles. And we're going to keep going, folks. We're not going to stop. Now, I have not prepped this video, but we're going to take a gamble on it. it shows them loading a, mo lo loading a Moab, dropping it. It exits the plane. It's pulled out by a little parachute. It is not a precision guided weapon. It does create something very much resembling the classic mushroom cloud, though not quite. And it is said to have a blast radius of a mile. Yes, I said a mile. No, I'm not kidding. What makes you think I'd be kidding? 
So now before we carry on with Crash Bang Boom, got to tell you a couple things. I forgot to do my announcements at the top of the air. As soon as I heard this blast, I knew tonight's show was going to be quite a hit. Because who else sits down, takes the time to educate you, explain what it is, and will take all the time necessary to point out why we did it, what we did, get you the facts. No, Justin's not calling back in tonight. He's otherwise engaged. But I have a feeling, if I was Kim Jong-un, I would not be sleeping soundly. Not by a long shot. I would not be resting easy. So. I would be very much. I'd be very much thinking, am I going to live to see another day? Now, this wasn't even the only strike conducted today. It's just the only one that made the news. So don't think that this was that they did one strike and done. Not even close. Now, multinational forces in Kuwait have wrapped up their Eagle Resolve ex exercise. So, and I do have a couple clips from the Operation Inherent Resolve update if we get to it. So, like I said, I started my show prep with one thought, and trust me, that thought went out the window when I was out running errands today and found out about Moab. It really did. I mean, my immediate reaction, no offense, I pulled over. Yes, I pulled over on the road I was driving again, driving on. And I sat there and I had to dash off a tweet and a couple of texts and a few direct messages. Oh my gosh, did you hear this? Now, how destructive is this particular bomb? Well, it's pretty darn powerful. That's why they call it the mother of all bombs. And... The reason they're able to do this kind of stuff is that Trump has given them authorization. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I am, I am here. It's just been a very, very long week. We are going to take a brief commercial break. So I can get myself something to drink. 
and I will be right back with you because my throat is dry. So can you permit me to just take an un unplanned commercial break, grab a drink, and when I come back, we will talk more Moab. And we'll also discuss the Russian bomb that they claim to have. All right, I will see you on the other side of this Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. Hi, just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Songs of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, bye, bye, bye. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. All right. Thank you for hanging in there with me over that unplanned but very much needed commercial break. And I thank you for bearing with me, folks. I am absolutely blown away, no pun intended, thank you, by the fact we finally used one of these. They don't make many of them. And they're, I'm assuming... A bit on the expensive side. That's why we have an arsenal until today of 15. We are now down to 14. Now, let's take a listen to what President Trump had to say about the military. And what I do is I authorize my military. We have the greatest military in the world, and they've done a job as usual. So we have given them total authorization, and that's what they're doing. And frankly, that's why they've been so successful lately. If you look at what's happened over the last eight weeks and compare that really to what's happened over the last eight years, you'll see there's a tremendous difference, a tremendous difference. So. We have incredible leaders in the military, and we have incredible military, and we are very proud of them. And this was another very, very successful mission. All right. So, as you'd expect, Commander-in-Chief is proud of his military. But I got to admit, the fact that he's not trying to claim himself a military expert, but said, here you go, guys. Here's the authorization. Do what you need to do to get this done. That's actually impressive. Equally impressive to me was when he paid his first visit to the Department of Defense when Secretary of Defense Mattis was sworn in. And they didn't show this on the air. I tripped over it on somebody's Twitter feed. The halls were lined with junior enlisted. And he went down the hall and shook every single one of their hands. Now, some people say because he's telling the military to do what they need that he's ceded responsibility and paying little operational attention to details. Trust me, he's getting brief. He knows what's going on. So... I don't blame him for ceding control because he is not a military expert. And the bombing did, did occur at night in a remote location. I have not seen any casualty totals and I don't know if they're going to be able to get one.
Now, Karzai wrote on Twitter, it is up to uh, us Afghans to stop the USA. Oh, excuse me, stop us from what? Trying to clean up your country so you can live in peace? John Alterman, director of Middle East Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, said that the Pentagon was being given leeway to carry out strategy without being told exactly what the overreaching, overarching strategy is. Today's strike, in, today's strike was requested. So, what can I say? Now, what makes the strike notable? And this is what's really struck me and part of why I pulled over earlier today. This bomb was originally tested at Elgin Air Force Base. The casualty that I read out the other day was a Green Beret. And that Green Beret's name, and I'll read it in part again, was Mark D. Allen, sir, or Allen Carr, of Edgewood, Maryland, based in Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. So he lost his life to small arms fire. We didn't want to lose another one. Green Berets are an expensive weapon. It costs a lot of money to train them. They go through extra classes that the regular military doesn't. They, they do all kinds of things that regular units don't. So... They are not a cheap weapon either. The bomb is pulled out of the plane by a drogue parachute. That's how big it is. I mean, it is pulled out of the back of the plane with a parachute because it can't be just shoved out. Like like some other things can. And it is the concussion concussion blast that does the most damage. So, what can I say? It is definitely, I think this was the concussion bl concussive blast felt around the world. Because I happen to know that if I was Kim Jong-un, I wouldn't be sleeping well tonight. I would be a little worried, especially if I was planning on actually setting off that nuclear test. Because remember, last night Pyongyang was evacuated. Yes, 25% of Pyongyang was evacuated. Now, that's not the only North Korea story we have, but I did want to bring it up.
there has been activity at the North Korea nuclear test site. And if you recall, the last one caused a five point something on the Richter scale. Who knows what they've gotten up to now. There are concerns North Korea may have the capability, capacity to launch missiles loaded with sarin. Or other WMDs. Would you like to know why? It's not hard to put a chemical weapon on a missile. It really isn't. And Japan's Prime Minister even mentioned something about it. Let's take a look at the story here. Japan says North Korea may be capable of sarin-loaded missiles. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, Abe warned Thursday that North Korea may be capable of firing a, firing a missile loaded with sarin nerve gas towards Japan, as international concern mounted that a missile or nuclear test by the authoritarian state could be imminent. And the response was to a question about Japan's readiness with the increased tension in the region. Because Pyongyang is preparing for the 105th anniversary of its founder, Kim Il-sung, which is on Saturday, which would be sometime on Friday, our time, folks. South Korea has long said it believes that the North can conduct its six nuclear tests whenever it chooses. And we've seen satellite imagery of the country's Pyongri nuclear test site. And the experts are saying it looks ready. Now, unlike Syria, North Korea did not sign the International Chemical Weapons Convention. The North has never acknowledged it has chemical weapons. However, intelligence community believes they may have up to 5,000 tons. And there is a Korean white paper on the topic. I am going to see if I can get a hold of that white paper. And I don't want to see chemical weapons used by anybody, not just Assad. The foreign ministry has issued a travel advisory to Japanese residents and tourists in South Korea, reminding them of the growing tension. However, they aren't saying there's an imminent danger. It's getting serious. Things are really heating up. And I have blown past my proper commercial break. So folks, we're going to pay them bills and I will see you on the other side. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. Hi, just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Songs of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Ryan Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, 
myself have battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, buy, buy, buy. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Thank you for hanging in there with me over that commercial break. We are going to finish our, up our discussion. Dis- untie my tongue here, folks. We're going to finish up the dis- discussion on Moab. Like I said, it was the concussive blast heard round the world. And yes, I will admit your host is a little tired. So maybe I need to pour myself another cup of coffee. All right. 
General John Nicholson, U.S. commander in Afghanistan, said he used the bomb so Afghan troops and their American advisors wouldn't have to go in on the ground to clear out the caves. Now picture this, folks. Remember, I said our special forces are also a very expensive weapon, no matter how much this bomb cost. Okay? It takes... I've heard inordinate amounts of money to train... <clears throat> Special, <coughs> excuse me there, folks, takes a ton of money to train a special forces soldier. We just had to bury another one. I'm sorry, I'd rather see a bomb, something designed to be used and expended. Now, the question is, Is North Korea planning to make their own loud boom? Except you wouldn't hear theirs. Unless maybe you're standing right outside that cave. Yes, they do their nuclear tests in a cave. Why? Well, in a way, I'm actually thankful they do. It doesn't release as much radiation into the air. Two, we can't see exactly what's going on. They do it out of secrecy, although it does help with the containing the radiation, because they seal the cave. Now, the press secretary, Sean Spicer, declined to say whether President Trump had personally authorized the use of the weapon. And he said that the strike target is the system of tunnels that allowed Dash to move around freely. And we did take precautions to minimize some civilian casualties, as we always do. Imagine, picture yourself in a dark cave, having to fight, potentially hand-to-hand -hand combat. Is that something that really sounds like fun to you? It sounds dangerous and scary to your host. So, this is the weapon that's best suited. Every job has one right tool. And that's just, this was the right tool for the job. And I can't, I can't fault them for using it. I really can't. I really can't, because if this was the weapon for it, for the job, why shouldn't they use it? It wasn't nuclear. So, I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know how else to put it out there. But every job has one right tool. And the job is best accomplished when you use the proper tool. to jail. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Thought I had that tab muted. I'm always chasing, even while I'm on the air with you, I'm often chasing down stories and other audio clips and things like that. I don't stop working when I sit in front of this microphone. Not for a minute. All right, let's move on. We've talked enough about the big boom. And I never did t let you hear my show prep tonight. It's here. It is right here. Yes, I've got it. I even found a couple lighthearted ones.
so let's see what we've got. Gotta love Fosher all side. He's gonna have to get his own sound effect. But he can't be quackers. I may have to try and find a crazy sound. We'll have to come up with something good for quack for Assad. All right, Bashar al Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has accused the West of fabricating a sus suspected chemical weapons attack that prompted un the unprecedented U.S. missile strike. Well, A, it's not unprecedented, but... The embattled leader whose country has been ravaged by six years of civil war has said his firepower had not been affected by the attack, but it, and acknowledged... You know, but Trump did acknowledge further strikes were possible. Assad also insisted that forces had turned over all their chemical weapons stock in 2013 and would never use banned arms. You really think that's true? I'm sorry, this is a man who bombs his own people. Then he said, well, what, some, the, you know, what about the videos? He's like, there's a lot of fake videos out there. We don't even know if these kids were really dead. And who, whose dead children are they? Where are they? Who committed the attack if there was an attack? Syria's government did sign the Chemical Weapons Convention and agreed to hand over its stockpiles in 2013 under a Russian broker deal, folks. I'm sorry. I can't say that I believe that they handed over much of anything. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons has begun an, F an investigation on the Khan Shikun incident, but Russia on Wednesday blocked the UN Security Council resolution demanding that Syria cooperate. So, Syria's big brother, Russia, came riding into the rescue. So, what can I say? What can I say? Now, then he go, Assad goes on and say, well, the airstrike showed us that Washington isn't serious about fighting terrorists. This is where I say you have to remember what Assad's definition of terrorist is. In his mind, it's anybody with a gun that's not him. Or one of his cronies. I'm sorry, there is nothing about Assad I like. Now, of course, this strike put us has locked has us locking horns with Russia, and I don't want us to get back to the era of the old Cold War. But you know what? I'd rather do that than cower. I really would. I'm sorry. I am sorry, but Bashar al-Assad, you need to go. You really do. And I don't know how else to put this. But you need to go. We need to bounce you right on out of there. Any military, governmental leader that... is willing to bomb their own people isn't worth having. All right. <clears throat> now, I do have a lighter story on this. But we're going to first... I mean, China, one of five perm permanent Security Council members, which does hold veto power, remember... The five permanent members hold veto power. 
They almost always vote with Russia. They abstained, as did Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Kazakhstan. Ten other countries voted for the resolution. Bolivia joined Russia. U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley condemned Russia's action, <clears throat> saying you are isolating yourselves from the international community. Every time one of Assad's planes drops another barrel bomb on civilians, and every time Assad tries to starve another community to death. And while it's possible that Syria launched that chemical weapons attack without Russia knowing, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. All right, let's lighten it up for just a minute. And I only have a couple minutes left, so we're going to finish this up, and then we're going to walk on out of here, folks. Tennessee Titans die, tight end Delani Walker flew to the Middle East earlier this month as part of an NFL-sponsored USO tour, expecting to visit some troops and get a behind-the-scenes education about the military. <coughs> He wasn't expecting to witness live military action. He got to sign some bombs. The next thing he knew, the bombs were getting taken to the Jets. Walker and two fellow NFL players, Miami Dolphins cornerback Bry Byron Maxwell and New Orleans Saint defensive end Cameron Jordan, were at an army base in Kuwait when Syrian President Bashar al-Assad launched a chemical weapons attack on April 4th. The next, the players then flew, flew to Abu, Abu Dhabi, unsure if their scheduled visit with Marines and Air Force, Marines and Airmen would be allowed to proceed. The players were eventually cleared to visit the bases where they saw various bombs and where they saw various bombs were being housed. They were even allowed to pick, put their signatures on them and where they watched the fighter jets take off. Now, the MPs boarded their buses and forced players to delete any pictures and videos taken at the base from their cell phones and cameras. Walker said, you could feel it's getting tense. I think they were planning a mission. I understand it was at that point Trump was making the decision, should they interfere, what should they do? He said, I think everyone was on edge. The players were in the Middle East when Trump ordered the airstrikes in Syria on April 7th. Walker said he and his fellow players never felt unsafe. They returned home with greater appreciation for what the American soldiers endure while serving overseas. Over their eight-day trip, the players interacted with hundreds of military members, learned about their jobs and motivation for serving, and participated in fun football skills competitions. Now that he's back in Nashville preparing for the start of the Titans up off-season program, Walker is playing close attention to the news out of the Middle East, including reports on Thursday about the bomb dropped by the U.S. military in Afghanistan. And while he's doing this, he says he's thinking about the men and women he met over, over there serving and what U.S. military actions might mean for their future. I'm, and then he says, quote, I'm more concerned about the people that are there. I don't want us to go to war, just meeting all the people there. Some of them, I look at them and I'm like, how are you in the military? You look so young. He's like, honestly, I know they're probably scared. They're not going to tell me that, but I kind of feel concerned, for, concerned about them now. Well, let me tell you this, Walker. Anyone who tells you they're not scared is crazy. All right. I got just a couple minutes and then I got to get on out of here and make way for Jen and Rick. I got three North Korea stories. We're going to fly through them. Yes, I said we're going to fly through the stories. The U.S. is prepared to launch preempt a preemptive strike with conventional weapons against North Korea should officials become convinced that North Korea is about to follow through with a nuclear weapons test. And that is from unanimous intelligence officials who spoke on the condition of anonymity. 
North Korea has warned that a big event is near, and U.S. officials say signs point to a nuclear test that could come as early as this weekend because of the 105th anniversary of Kim Il-sung's birth. The U.S. has positioned two destroyers capable of shooting Tomahawk cruise missiles in the region off the coast. They are 300 miles from the North Korean nuclear test site. U.S. American, American heavy bombers are in Guam to attack North Korea should it be necessary. And earlier this week, the Pentagon announced that the USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier strike group was diverted to the area. The danger of such an attack by the U.S. is it could provoke the volatile and unpredictable North Korean regime to launch its own blistering attack on its southern neighbor. Here's the thing, folks. We don't fear the Korean missiles as much as we fear their bombs and the fact that they have the fourth largest army in the world. Now, retired Admiral James Stafford, as former commander of NATO, said two things are coming together this weekend. One is the distinct possibility of the sixth North Korean nuclear weapons detonation, and the other is an American carrier strike group, which has a great deal of firepower headed right at the Korean Peninsula. The U.S. is aware that simply preparing an attack, even if it will only be launched if there is an imminent North Korean action, increases the danger of provoking a large conflict. It's high stakes. We're trying to communicate up our, our level of concern and the existence of many military options to dissuade the North first. It's a feat we've never achieved before, but there's a new sense of resolve here. Multiple government, I mean, China has since sent, since the meeting with Trump, China has sent negotiators to Pyongyang to communicate with the gravity of the situation with the North. Moscow's weighed in as well. Implementation of the preemptive U.S. plan, according to multiple U.S. officials, depends centrally on the consent of the South Korean government. Seoul has got to be persuaded that action is worth the risk. There is a universal concern that any military move right now might provoke a North Korean attack, even a conventional attack across the DMZ. So, all right. I got one, two more stories, and then we are getting out of here for tonight, folks. Because quite frankly, your host is tired and hungry. Not far from Pyongyang's massive communist monuments, government offices, and propaganda murals, most depicting the country's two deceased leaders, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, lies the Orphan Primary School, a pristine state-run institution that provides some insight into how the country exists the way it is. The school on its surface is impressive. A few dozen healthy-looking children were playing soccer, singing songs, reciting lessons in perfect unity when the reporters visited. School had a well-tuned piano, a well-stocked pantry, even a taxidermy room for animal science lessons. Yet the school raised red flags for two reasons. One, most North Koreans can't afford these things. And two, the government was clearly only showing us, showing reporters, as it always does, what it wants them to see. But the murals on the wall illustrate a patriotic fable about a humble humble porcupine overcoming a fearsome tiger. And another showed a cartoon of joyous-looking children next to an intercontinental ballistic missile launch. And in the kitchen, a cook informed the reporters that Kim Jong-un has visited the school. So, a lot going on, folks. A lot going on. Now, humans aren't the only ones displaced from Mosul. 
It took two rescue attempts and nearly two weeks to successfully evacuate the last two surviving animals from a derelict zoo in war-torn Mosul, Iraq. But if he could do it over, veterinarian Amir Khalil wouldn't hesitate. These animals don't have the option to be evacuated by the army. If I had the chance, I'd do it over and over again. Khalil, who works with anim an animal welfare charity, Four Paws International, said the two animals, a lion named Simba and a bear named Lulu, arrived safely at an animal rehabilitation center in Amman, Jordan, on Tuesday, where they are recovering from their strenuous journey. The rescue was no easy feat and took months of planning after initial mission by Four Paws to provide the animals with food and urgent veterinary care all of which took place amidst a brutal conflict and ongoing violence. All right, folks. I, have, I am glad that the animals are out. Oh, what was that, Host Kitty? <coughs> Host Kitty says he's glad, too. And those of you who are regulars, you know what's coming. You know it. 